Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to take a look at cell division um, and specifically we're looking at mitosis. So before we get into mitosis itself, uh, a little bit of review of what we already looked at um, in the cell cycle. So the cell cycle, remember, is basically looking at the life of a cell. What does a cell do during different points within its life? Okay. Um, so we use a graph to help us follow the cell cycle. Um, so we start the first part of the cell cycle, and this is what we looked at last class, G1. Okay, G1 is when a cell grows bigger. Um, S phase, so after the cell grows bigger, it makes a copy of all the chromosomes. G2, grow a little bit bigger, make a copy of organelles in preparation to split into two cells. Okay, so we looked at interphase last class, G1, S, and G2. Those are all part of interphase, that part of the cell's life. Um, at this point, though, the cell has not divided. So we've basically prepared. Interphase is all about preparing a cell to divide. Grow bigger, make a copy of all the chromosomes, uh, make a copy of organelles, and get ready to split in two. That's what interphase is all about. Now, why does a cell grow bigger? Well, if you think about it, if you had a cell, and it didn't grow bigger before it divided, it would get smaller. And then when those divided, they would get smaller and smaller. And cells would continue to get smaller and smaller. Um, so we don't want that to happen. So that's why we have, we always say G1, cell grows bigger. S makes a copy of all the chromosomes. G2, a little bit bigger, make a copy of organelles in preparation for cell division. So interphase, all about preparation for cell division. So now we're going to take a look at this section of the cell cycle this point in the cell's life where it's actually going to divide into two different cells. The first part of cell division um, is called mitosis uh, where you, sep you make sure you separate the chromosomes so that each of the new cells has an exact copy so they have the exact same DNA instructions and then cytokinesis is the point where cells actually split in two. So mitosis is all about separating the chromosomes and cytokinesis is the final split between the two cells. So here's the big question. How do you get from one diploid cell to a cell that has divided into two identical cells? Okay, so we start with one cell, this cell that we're looking at right here on the screen, grow bigger, uh, make a copy of all the DNA, and then split into two identical. That's what we're looking at. So how do you go from one diploid cell to two identical diploid cells? All right, so on your paper, um, you should have it spread out like this. This is one of the handouts that you got in class. If not, you could take a look on the um, handout page, and it will be on there. So go ahead and grab that paper. It looks like... So you want to grab this paper, okay, and uh, we're going to fill in these first uh, one, two, three, four, five, six boxes right here, okay? So we're going to see what mitosis, what happens during mitosis that makes sure that the two ending cells wind up with the exact same DNA instructions by making a copy of all the chromosomes and making sure, okay? So this is going to be our starting cell, so you would draw, uh, draw that in box one and write starting cell at the top. Then we have interphase. Um, interphase, remember, includes G1, growing bigger, S, making a copy of all the chromosomes, and uh, G2, making a copy of organelles, getting ready to split. So interphase, if we were to draw this cell after interphase, it would look like this. Okay? So we made a copy of every single chromosome. So this chromosome right here, let's say this one's from mom, this one's from dad. Okay? So one from mom, one from dad in a homologous pair. Over here, this one's from mom, this one's from dad. The only difference now is they have copies attached to them. Okay, So this one from mom, it looks like an X because half of it is a copy and the other half is an exact copy. And we call these two sister chromatids. So this is a sister chromatid, this is a sister chromatid, and they're still connected. The one right here from dad, same thing. You have a copy connected to a copy a sister chromatid connected to a sister chromatid. So whenever you hear sister chromatid, just think copies. They're copies of each other. And the sister chromatids stay connected at the point right here called the centromere. Okay? Um, so we have um, this, our starting cell. We make a copy of every chromosome during interphase, and the copies stay stuck together. Then we get into mitosis. So prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. A series of predictable steps on what's going to happen to the chromosomes. 
okay, in order to make sure we get both cells having a copy of each chromosome. So these four are prophase. And a really simple shortcut to remember the four steps in order is remember PMAT, the acronym PMAT, P-M-A-T. If you remember that, it'll be P for prophase, M for metaphase, A for anaphase, and T for telophase. All right, so interphase, um, underneath what you drew for interphase, you're going to write down the cell grows bigger and a copy of each chromosome is made. So that's what happens here. Next, we have prophase. So if you need to stop between each one, either because you're absent uh, during the class period, uh, lost your paper, something like that, make sure you pause before um, and draw and then move on. Okay, so prophase, during prophase, the chromosomes condense and the nucleus begins to disappear. Okay, so chromosomes um, wrap up even tighter around histone proteins and you get uh, really clear, distinct uh, X shapes for the chromosomes here. During metaphase, now what you want to remember for metaphase is middle, okay? So M for metaphase, okay? Remember middle because chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell like this during metaphase, okay? Um, so chromosomes will always line up in the middle during metaphase, okay? Um, so the bottom paper chromosomes line up in the middle and here in mitosis they line up in one nice long straight line down the middle now if you look at this you should be able to predict what's going to happen next okay now these little lines you're seeing these are called uh, mitotic spindle fibers and they're they are what actually push the chromosomes move them around the cell so right now they're attached to the centromere of each of these chromosomes um, and remember if you're looking at just this chromosome right here half of it is an exact copy of the other half. So you have copies stuck to each other. So you can actually predict what's going to happen next during anaphase. Okay, so looking at it, these spindle fibers are actually going to pull the copies apart from each other. But we want to use scientific terms. So we're going to pull the sister chromatids apart. So during anaphase, you're going to want to remember A for away. Okay, so A equals away. The sister chromatids are pulled away from each other to opposite sides of the cell. Okay, so sister chromatids are pulled away to opposite sides of the cell. Now, this should make sense of what's going on. We want to make sure both new cells have an exact copy of each chromosome. Well, look, this is an exact copy of that. This is an exact copy of that. This is an exact copy of that, and so on. So we're actually pulling copies to opposite sides, and you can again imagine or predict what's going to happen next. If this cell now pinches in two right down the middle here, you'll have two cells each having an exact copy of each chromosome. So the last phase is telophase or telophase. Um, so at this point, the nucleus starts to form again around the chromosomes. And each one, you have the homologous pairs once again, one from mom, one from dad, one from mom, one from dad, one from mom, one from dad here. Same thing over here, one from mom, one from dad. So this one from mom matches this one from mom. This one from dad matches this one from dad. Okay, so we've made a copy of every single chromosome, and we made sure that one copy gets into each of the new cells. So during telophase, chromosomes begin to decondense, so they unwind, um, they're not as tight anymore, and the nucleus starts to form. All right, and then finally cytokinesis, you don't need to draw this on your paper, but cytokinesis is when the cell um, pinches into two. Okay, so the, cyto the cytoplasm pinches down the middle and you get two identical cells. So these are our two identical cells. We started with one diploid cell and we wound up with two identical diploid cells. All right, so here's how your paper should look. Starting cell, during interphase, we make a copy of each chromosome, and the copies stay stuck together. Don't forget the copies are called sister chromatids. So sister chromatid, sister chromatid. That's why you have that X shape. Um, during prophase, the chromosomes condense. Metaphase, they line up in the middle, M for middle. Anaphase, the copies, the sister chromatids, get pulled away from each other to the sides, so A away. And telophase, the chromosomes begin to decondense, and the nucleus starts to form. So here's a short video I'd like you to watch. Uh, it actually puts all the steps together. Cell cycle includes all phases of a cell's life. For about 90% of the cell cycle, the cell is in interphase. During this phase, the cell grows and copies its chromosomes. The chromosomes exist 
as long thin strands of DNA within the nuclear envelope and nucleolus. Two centrioles, a single pair, lie at right angles to each other just outside the nucleus. Near the end of interphase, the cell prepares to divide. At this time, the DNA is replicated, producing identical strands called sister chromatids. The sister chromatids of each chromosome are attached to one another at the centromere. The centrioles are also duplicated. Now the division of the cell nucleus into two identical daughter nuclei begins. This process is called mitosis. The first phase of mitosis is prophase. During prophase, the replicated chromosomes condense. Sister chromatids remain attached at the centromere. The two centriole pairs move to opposite sides of the cell. The nucleolus and the nuclear envelope dissolve. The mitotic spindle forms between the two centriole pairs. A spindle fiber attaches to the centromere on each chromosome. The spindle fibers begin to move the chromosomes to the center of the cell. The second phase of mitosis is metaphase. The chromosomes line up on a plane in the center of the mitotic spindle. The third phase of mitosis is anaphase. The centromere of each chromosome divides. The sister chromatids separate and are pulled toward opposite ends of the cell by the spindle fibers. The fourth and final stage of mitosis is telophase. Daughter nuclei form at each end of the cell. Mitosis is then complete, but the process of cell division continues. During cytokinesis, the cell membrane begins to pinch the cytoplasm of the cell in half. Cytokinesis and the process of cell division is complete when two new daughter cells are formed. After cell division, the cells re-enter interphase and begin another cell cycle. The chromosomes uncoil and the cell resumes normal activity. All right, so that was a mitosis in continuous steps. So not, it kind of looks jagged when you put, you know, phase by phase down on paper, but there you can actually see how it flows. One phase right into the next phase, into the next, and so on. Okay, so that's um, mitosis. Um, you can actually look at mitosis underneath a microscope and actually see the different phases of mitosis happen within a cell. So here, this is a picture of uh, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and here's an artist rendition renditioning of each phase. So prophase, metaphase, middle, anaphase, A away, copies move away from each other. And then you wind up with telophase, where the chromosomes begin to decondense and the nucleus has formed. Okay. Um, now I'd like you to try and take these pictures here and see if you could identify each phase. Okay. Now if you're a Twilight fan, uh, this is actually the, the first scene where Bella and um, Edward meet. They're in science class and the, the teacher gives them little slides of onion of an onion, and they have to identify which phase of mitosis um, each cell is at. So you can take a look at these pictures, and you should be able to, be able to identify which one is anaphase, metaphase, uh, prophase, telophase. And just as a refresher, as a, uh, to remind you, um, PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. It'll always go in that order. You don't, you never switch them around. It's always PMAT in that order. So see if you can identify. Okay. Um, so the last thing. Um, to uh, know about mitosis, or the last thing to remember, is that you take one diploid cell and you make two identical diploid cells. So that happens all over your body. Remember, every single cell of your body is a diploid cell. The only cells in your body that are not diploid are your egg if you're a female, or sperm if you're a male. So every cell in your body is diploid. This is how we make copies of those. So especially your skin, your skin is constantly, your skin cells are constantly dividing. So right now, as you've been sitting there watching this video, probably millions or billions of your skin cells have divided, uh, creating more new skin cells. They've gone through mitosis, what you just saw. So mitosis creates identical diploid body cells.